Well, hey guys, we're in the book of Romans today. We're moving into this. We finished the book of Acts. We're going to be in Romans. Romans is a great book to teach you stuff that you need to know. Acts was action. Romans is doctrine. You need both. If, if, if you Acts is a great book, man. I love it. Action. I, I like reading action books. It's an action story. A lot of action happening. But if you have action without direction, that's you're an unguided missile. A lot of action happening. A lot of people running around and crazy stuff. But not what you want to be. You want to be a guided missile with a purpose. Okay. Um, if we're going to use that goofy analogy. Um, so acts is action and Christians need to be taking action. Christians also need to know what our action means, why we take it, what what we're doing and why we're doing it and how to explain it to somebody. So Romans and Acts go together. Teaching and action go together. It's all true throughout the Bible. It's not just Acts. Romans teaches this. Read Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is the t- second telling of the law. It's a bunch of law doctrine stuff. What comes with Deuteronomy? Joshua. Action. Okay. Deuteronomy leads straight to action. You have to have both. You have to know where you're going. You have to know why you're going and who you're following what the rules are, everything else. Joshua in chapter 1, before he takes any of his action, Joshua is told to study God's law, meditate on it day and night, do not let it depart from your lips, think about it, talk about it, and obey it all the time so that God will be with you wherever you go. Take action, be strong, courageous, uh, keep on going, step forward. So take action, but you got to know what your action's all about. you got to know it. So Romans is a counterpart to Acts. They go together. You have to be action-oriented, and you have to also know what you're talking about. Okay, That's what this is for. So we're going to study this. It's a much shorter book, like in terms of count all the words or count the chapters. It's much shorter than Acts. But we might spend just about as much time in it because some of the stuff in doctrinal teaching can be a little complex, hard to understand, and so we will spend a good bit of time in here. And I say that as an encouragement to you. If you start reading uh, Romans chapter 1, you'll realize that the first seven verses are one run-on sentence, a very long run-on sentence. He would get bad grammar in his uh, whatever high school English class. They would tell him, hey, put more periods in here, man. You're Okay? But... That's not what it's about. He's trying to cover a lot of ground. He's writing to people who he hasn't met yet, and he wants to make sure he teaches some important stuff. So, yep, it might be complex, but you haven't met Paul either, so you need to read his most doctrinally oriented book that he wrote in order to help understand the gospel better. If you have questions about the Bible, if you have questions about the gospel, what does it mean to be a Christian? Chances are Romans is going to have answers for you. It's very systematic. So I'm going to work with you through this. There's going to be parts that I'm probably going to scratch my head on with you as well. But it's important, and we're going to end this together. And I hope you watch this whole series. I I really hope you do. At the core of it, though, we'll just talk about the main theme today. The main theme of the book of Romans is that God's goodness is clearly evident It is manifested, it is evident, it is clearly seen, it is demonstrated. God's love is demonstrated in the gospel. That's the core. And you'll see him say that in different ways on every page of Romans. That God's goodness, God is good, God is righteous, God is good. The gospel proves it. The gospel makes it clear. Okay? So, do you know anybody who sometimes wonders if God is good, if God really hears your prayers, if God is really there. Do you know anybody like that? Do you see evil going on around you and you say, what in the world, where's the answers to this? Do you, do you read your, your Bible and see all this stuff about Jesus and say, yeah, but what does that have to do with, with all of this? Do you ever do that? I do. I assume you do. I, everybody does. Romans is going to lay that out. How, how, does, how does God's goodness, clearly seen in the gospel, what is the gospel? How, how is that clearly seen? And, and what does that have to do with me? We're going to read this together, and it's going to show us, okay? That's, that's going to be your core here. That's what we're going to see. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Verse 16 is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Greek. For in it, verse 17, the righteousness of God, the goodness of God, is revealed, meaning you can see it, 
um, from faith to faith, as is written, a righteous man will live by faith. All right? Righteousness of God is revealed. It is clearly seen. It is known. So let's study it. Let's find out. That's that's the video for today. We're just talking about what it's going to be about. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll cover it some more. We'll go in a lot deeper with this. But God wants you to know that he is good, that he is righteous, that he loves you. And the way to do that is going to be to know the gospel and know it better. Praise the Lord, guys. God bless.